Welcome to The Hunt. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, HuntCast Podcast. We've been on a little hiatus over the last couple of weeks. We've been busy. Doug is freshly tanned, back from Mexico. <laughs> he didn't think I was going to say it, but I saw it as soon as I pulled him in the driveway. Yeah. But we're back. We're back. We're back. And it is the week, the week for Archery Fest at Montage Mountain 2024. We're super excited. But we're going to try to play a little catch up with you. Kind of going back to, let's see, you left before or after Brewfest? I left that week. That week. That Saturday. Yep. So, so Doug played hooky around to Mexico. Yeah. We were up at Brewfest up at Montage, set up a little booth during the Brewfest. It was pretty cool. I'm not a big, like, small brew guy like you know give me a miller light type of deal but there were some beers that i had that were pretty darn good and we talked to a lot of people about archery fest that either didn't know about it or hadn't signed up yet so it worked out so you were in mexico what'd you do in mexico not a lot <laughs> <laughs> not a lot he says nope i i spent a week on the beach uh-huh. drinking and eating and that's about it uh-huh. he didn't have his bow with him i bet you i did not have my bow no <laughs> no did not have my bow but, so uh, yeah, I didn't do a whole lot, nice. which is, that was the plan. That was the plan, yeah. right? Yep. So, so yeah, so that, uh, all happened while Doug was gone. I think we might have mentioned Camp Freedom once before, but if not, Camp Freedom is a local veterans, first responder, Blue Star family camp, nonprofit, does awesome things. They have an awesome piece of property about 35, 40 minutes from our shop and last, not last weekend, last weekend. Last week. Yes, last week. Last weekend. Yep. They had called about a week, week and a half prior to see if we could come up and set up our trailer with our press and some goods for an event that they had going on. And this was the second year the event was there. And I really want to say the name, but I'll say the name of it. <laughs> it's Mountain Archery Fest. So they, they called and asked if I'd go up and set up to have a press and the ability to fix somebody's bow if it went down you know, little minuscule things that could, that could happen while you're out on 3D course. And of course, because they had called and we love to work with Camp Freedom and look forward to working a lot more with them, I said yes. So for those of you that know the debacle that happened last year on why we had to change the name of our shoot, apparently somebody doesn't know how to read real well. But regardless, I'm not I'm just going to, just, just yeah. the easy stuff, yeah, just yeah. the easy stuff. Yeah. But no, so Camp Freedom, we were up there and Again, their facility is is awesome, and all the people that work there and volunteer there are awesome. So we were there. We were there Friday, Saturday, and two days. They might have brought through maybe 150, maybe a little bit more shooters. They had six vendors, including us. So seeing it firsthand, obviously, because we have our event, and I think that they're not happy that we have our event, but you know, seeing it firsthand, I was like, "Hmm, okay. From, you know, what everybody gets to see online, according to their slogans and descriptions, they had somebody really good write that for them (laughs) because it didn't happen. Yeah. But, but yeah, so we, we ended up doing, have to doing a a restring on somebody's bow. We did some arrows and actually a lot of shooters were buying high tines gear. So it was pretty cool. Um, We sold a bunch of t-shirts and sweatshirts there. So that was pretty fun. And there was a couple of vendors, Bow Minded, which will be at our shoot next week or this coming week. Jacob, good guy out of Syracuse, New York, does some really cool apparel and has a slew of it. So expect to see a 10 by 20 booth from him in our vendor village. And Hunt Lift Eat guys were there and I'm a member of Hunt Lift Eat. And so I got to hang out with Garrett and Kiefer for a little bit. And then there were some other members that came up to shoot. So I did. Uh, my brother-in-law was with me the second day. I went out and walked. I think it was the first five targets on their, what they call the world record course. And uh, so let me ask you this, Doug. So (laughs) this one threw me for, for a little bit. So this course that they have, it's a, they have a sign on each stake and you can scan it Okay, and it tells you all about the hunt. So I thought, well, that was pretty cool. You know, you can learn and get the whole ordeal on what happened, how the shot went down. Sure. You ever seen an antelope in the middle of the woods? Uh, in my 40 years of, I <laughs> think, no, I've never seen an okay. antelope in the woods. So no, now I get it. We have the same issues. You know, every 3d course has its issues of trying to find a place to put an animal that doesn't belong there. Right. 
But in this scenario, when you have a sign that is going to tell you about a hunt, <laughs> why would you stick an antelope in the middle of oak trees? Don't know. Right? Put it somewhere out in the open. Absolutely. Put it in the field. Yeah. And there's plenty of it. I mean, Camp Freedom has a big property. Now, granted, some of it is high-fenced because they have animals there and whatnot, but literally the very next target was a wide open grass area. <laughs> so Perfect I was, for an antelope. For, yeah, right? Yeah. So kind of threw me for a loop on that one um, to be a course that that does that and you, you don't kind of follow the rule of the hunt. Yeah. And again, I, I get it, you know, I just would have selected a different animal to be in the woods rather than an antelope. Well, uh, you know what though, that's, but that's why we're different. Right. <laughs> right. Not everybody puts that much thought into it. Exactly. You know, maybe we're the ones that are could out be. of our minds. Could be. You know. Very well could be. <laughs> But, but yeah, other than that, like I said, uh, got to hang out with the Hunt Lift Eat crew for a little bit. Got a new tattoo while I was there. Big shout out to my buddy Neil, the outdoor artist. It, really cool dude, and he's based out of Pennsylvania. Has a trailer, travels to all these different outdoor hunting type events, and does tattoos out of his trailer. Yeah, that's cool. So I got a nice new elk antler on my arm, so I was ecstatic about that. My wife, not so not much. Not so much. <laughs> I was just going to say, right? probably not so much. Yeah, if you read the comments on the <laughs> Facebook picture when I did it. Yeah, okay. But, but yeah, so we're hoping next year, Neil was unfortunately booked for another event in Pennsylvania, actually, next weekend for our shoot. So he couldn't make it, but hopefully next year he'll be there to do some tattoos. And cool. it was cool because I don't think there was anybody in his trailer longer than an hour. Okay. And some of them were decent sized pieces. My, I was sat for 25 minutes in and out. Yeah. And just does phenomenal work, fast, phenomenal work. So yeah. there was no, I wasn't nervous that it was that fast. Like most of my tattoos, you know, I sat for eight, nine hours. Yeah. I know those lines are straight because I was there for a long time, but he did phenomenal. So I would highly recommend if you're at an event and Neil's there, get some ink. Yeah. But other than that, there was a titanium archery products was there. Another PA based company yep. out of York, Botech, which I guess is one of their new sponsors. Which they is bizarre, did, they did, really it, bizarre. Yeah, and, and they didn't have a booth per se. They had like a rack with like three or four bows on it over okay. near the novelty shots that you can just shoot, like test them. But you were testing like five feet away. It was a big foam block because okay. there was no sights, no nothing on them. Okay. You know, and arrest. Did they, did they have signage? Like were they sponsors for certain courses or? Not that I saw. No? Actually, I don't think even when we went, when I walked with the group from HLE that went to shoot their records course, yeah, that there was sponsorship signs there. Okay. There's a, there was a bunch of flags when you drove into Camp Freedom with the manufacturers that, you know, are, are a part of it. Right. But I don't remember seeing anything on the course. Did you bring a bow? I did. And because it was slow the majority of the time. While I was there, I figured I'm going to sight my bow in, so okay. I did. All right, cool. You know, they had some bags on the range, and they went out to 110 yards, and I got out to 100, 110. I don't know what's going on with the bow, but I shot over the target on the first shot. Then I shot low after I adjusted my sight. Okay. And then I adjusted back and went over the target again. So apparently 110 yards is not my friend. <laughs> but the, the, the downfall... I say the only downfall really that Camp Freedom has is where that property is located is literally on the top of a mountain. Yeah. The windmills that you can see driving on the Casey Highway yep. are literally in their backyard. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of wind up there. I bet, yeah. <laughs> and trying to shoot 100 yards with a real light arrow. Yeah. There was a couple that I like watched take off. They went perfectly straight and about halfway down the range, they were like turning left. And I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> they straightened back out, but yeah. I did, I shot one bulls. I had a hundred yards. So I was happy. Okay. That's, that's something. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And I think they had a, they had a food truck there. Okay. Friday they had one food truck. Saturday they had two food trucks. Okay. Which was cool. They were local people. So I'm assuming Camp Freedom called them in. Yeah. But. No, I'm dying to know. Uh -huh. So you said you had a restring a bow. Uh -huh. Did you happen to have that string and cables with you? No, or so he, he brought this, his own. This is how funny this was. This was actually a math employee. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Had an elite. Oh, man. I don't remember what the bow was now. It might have been an ethos, actually. Oh, no. Um, okay. I think so. Okay. 
but had his strings with him. And I guess, you know, wow. because they're traveling all the time. Yeah, um, I guess so. In that situation. Yeah. He was like, can you throw this on? So I did that. And then. What happened? What did he do? Nothing. The strings were just shot. They oh, were okay. just all, gotcha. you know, fraying and whatnot. Gotcha. And then we had a couple bows come in loose, loose pieces that we tightened back up. And okay. The funny part though, and and this is this is really the funny part to me, I'm really trying to behave in this situation. <laughs> so the owner of MAF, who we've had our fair share of interactions, pain, pain in the ass interactions with, yeah. he Friday night texted me and asked if I could bring some veins to fletch his arrows. And my first thought was like, really? He's just yeah. texting me that. Then I let the smarter side of my brain think for a minute and I said, yeah, what color do you want? So, <laughs> which is a very small, small part of the brain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, that very rarely comes out. Yeah. But so he said, if you have some pink, I would do pink. And I said, okay, yep, I have pink. So Keith and I got there a little early on Saturday. Okay. And I found him and I said, hey, let me get those arrows. You know, I don't want to be sitting here doing these all day. Yeah. So I did them and Keith was kind of like second guessing, like, why are you fletching his arrow? Right. And it, it took a, a few people until about we left to realize why I did it. Okay. So there's always a method to the madness. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. So, so Doug is very familiar with what happened last year. And so I fletched the arrows. Everything was cool. I put a left fletch on him. He asked for a left fletch. I oh. put a left fletch on him. Okay. So I was super nice. I, 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 so it's a good thing. You know, I you don't have a right jig, so. myself for how nice I was. Okay. But you have any idea why I might have fletched those? I don't. What's on our, what's on all of our fletchings? Oh, geez. Did you? Absolutely. I did. <laughs> Every <laughs> single one of those arrows says high times archery. Oh, man. Three times to be exact. <laughs> you know, he got done with his shooting. Nope. Got the knife out. And nope. Just, Somebody just... sent me a video yesterday. Yeah. Of him shooting in his backyard. Wow. And my veins are still on those arrows. Wow. And then I got a nasty text from him. I was, I was, that was my next thing. Yeah. So that, that I never heard about the next text. I didn't know if that was before or after. Oh yeah. No, no. So this other text happened yesterday. So with our shoot coming up this year, we are doing a 10 target competition course. Now I don't follow mountain archery fest after the ordeals we went through last year with them. I get a text from the owner that states, I guess you can't think of anything on your own. <laughs> I, I was like, what? And he proceeds to send me a screenshot from whether it was Instagram, Facebook, whatever, of the little flyer that I built yeah. for the comp to just let people know. And I shared it into the PA3D Archery group, shared it on our page okay, and on Instagram. Now, we're at Montage Mountain, so I simply named it quick because I wanted to make a flyer, The Mountain Madness 3D Tournament. Okay. Okay. Reasonable. Now, yeah, right? You would think. <laughs> yeah. So, unbeknownst to me, after he texts me this and tells me that I'm trying to copy him again, I go on to his website because now I'm intrigued because he said he's been doing this for four years. Yeah. Well, according to his website, he started this last year and also <laughs> happens to name the competition that they do, Mountain Madness. Okay. So, basically, I had been fed up at this point. So, I basically told him to stop stalking me. <laughs> Stay in Colorado, man. Like, yeah. do whatever you want to do out there. Leave me alone. Don't cross the Mississippi. Right, yeah. yeah. So, I went and took the flyer down and now we're just going to call it the Mountain Throwdown. Okay. So... It's like little, little things. And I don't know if he's like worried because we take on more shooters or what. I, I don't know. But dude, I'm not coming to Colorado. So like <laughs> I won't steal your shooters out there. I don't know what else I could do. But yeah. So. Well, you say that though, but what about that new, new friends out we, in Colorado? We have some new friends. <laughs> okay. We have friends. So there is a chance. There's, there's a slight chance. Yeah. So for those of you, if you are in Colorado and listening to us and would like to go shoot an awesome, awesome venue, an awesome, awesome festival, yeah. check out our friends at Western Hunt Fest. 
they do some cool things. And our friend Sam from Archery in Motion does a lot with those guys. And Jeff from Western Hunt Fest is trying to figure out his schedule to fly out here to shoot our course next week. Hmm which I really hope he makes it. Sam, if you're listening, give him a ride. Yeah. And we'll get him back somehow. <laughs> but yeah, so what we're, there's possibilities for next year. Now, will we go out West? Probably not. Will we definitely help do some stuff with them? Absolutely. Sure. For their events out West. But again, this wasn't something where, you know, Sean attack has solidified the deal of the nationwide shoot. Okay. That, we're, we're never going to be attack. I don't want to be attacked. Well, I just said never, never plan to be. Right. So. Yeah. So Sean and Rob and all the guys that work over attack, they do a phenomenal job. They have these crazy resorts, you know, all over the country. And that's not what we're trying to do or what we want to do. I could tell you right now, cause Doug wasn't here for a week and I was trying to handle all the little tiny stuff. <laughs> that I didn't have to do last year because he was in Mexico. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't need those headaches. It's a full-time job. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, you know, our goal is to provide our customers, our local archery enthusiasts, local hunters, something fun that isn't a competition. Right. Grows the archery community. So like this whole math deal, like why he's scared of anybody that runs an event, I have no idea. But it is what it is. But like I said, we're, uh, I apologize for using basic words to make a competition. So, you know, you keep your mountain madness deal. We'll, we'll worry about our stuff on our own. Yeah. But I have since blocked him from everything. Like I'm just, well, that, that's what I'm curious about. So he, he saw it. So he's either following the page. Yep. Or somebody, well, so he, somebody passed it on to him. He told me in a, in a text that it was one of his sponsors. Okay. Dude, I'm telling you right now, none of your sponsors (laughs) are, you know, well, no, according to, you know, his website is Onyx and Carbon TV and all that stuff. I can guarantee you, no, none of them are watching High Times Archery's Facebook page. Definitely not. To to look at that, okay? One, we don't use Onyx for anything. We use Spartan Forge. Yeah. So, obviously, we can care less about that. Wasn't Bowtech. Wasn't Bowtech, (laughs) because everybody knows how I feel about Bowtech. (laughs) And like, it, it, I don't know, it, it is what it is and, you know. Well, it is, yeah, exactly. It is what it is, so. But so it's off my chest now, now that kind of people can hear it from me, because <laughs> that's what I dealt with last year. Yeah. It, literally about the same time. Two weeks before the shoot last year, I got the letter? Yes. Yeah. Something like that. So, old Joe Legal or whatever his name was. Yeah. But regardless, so getting back to it. You know, so I, I had a good good time with the people I, I hung out with. All in all, Camp Freedom was Camp Freedom was a success. Awesome. Awesome. So you're happy that you went. Yep. Yep. So um Matt happy to do it again. And Jamie and all those guys at Camp Freedom, you know, they knew the situation from last year. Yeah. That's why they reached out their behalf. Right. And we're gonna plan on doing a lot more things with them. The funny part is is they do have another competition, which is the only one that I knew about. Okay. Which is a hunt lift eat competition. And so my wife's second cousin, I think it is second. And we didn't know this or I didn't know this until he came into the shop last year and he was dropping his ball off for some work. And I said, uh, what's your, you know, what's your last name? And when he said it, I was like, huh? And he said, Damiano. And I, well, my, my wife has Damianos in her family because it, it, no one else pronounces it this way. Everybody else around here is a Damiano. Right, right. So it turns out he is my wife's second cousin, and he ended up winning the Hunt Lefty Challenge. Oh, nice. Okay. And he works at Camp Freedom. Oh, he works there. Yep. Okay. He's a vet and actually married Matt's daughter, Hollis. Okay. Uh, which they're awesome folks, and both of them have been in the shop a bunch. So it was cool. So he got a membership to Hunt Lift Eat, so now he's in our little group chat that we have. <laughs> okay. But basically, you had like an elk quarter, and there was like four different exercises you had to do and then make a shot. Okay. And it was timed or something. So Frankie won it. So big shout out to Frankie. Nice. And then they showed me, Matt and Jamie let me in on a little secret that I didn't know they were doing. Oh. So they started doing river trips at Camp Freedom for the vets okay. up on the Delaware for okay. fishing. Yep. And I was a fly fishing guide for a while and I love to fly fish. So they're telling me this and I'm like, well, like, what are you using? And they have a, another guy that volunteers up there that, has a drift boat. Okay. 
but they got a drift boat. And I'm like, well, where is it? And they told me where, and I go look at it. So I went, and they got a really nice boat. And we're working on some things. So hopefully, here soon, on Mondays, when I actually get a day off, <laughs> if possible, I'm going to try to guide some trips for them. Oh, nice. Up okay. on the Delaware. So okay. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And we're also going to do a hiking trip with them. Okay. Similar what we did with the kids. Um, we're doing one with the kids again this year. So we yeah. might try to combine it to take a vet and their son or daughter Okay. up to the high peaks. So Matt was super excited about that. Okay. So yeah, but all in all, like you said, getting to hang out with the guys at HLE and meet Neil and then Jacob and his uncle from Beaumont that were there and just all the guys that can't freedom are, are super cool. Yeah. So it was, it was fun to hang out with them and, and just shoot the bull, yeah. meet some people. Get to see what it's all about. Yeah. So the first hand, first hand, well, that's for, just it. for me, instead of hearing about it, right, you, you know, just saw what it's all about. We, we heard it was, I don't even know. Yeah. I know Doug's shaking his <laughs> finger at me. I'm trying to figure out the word to use. Be nice. But be nice. The fact that it's not our shoot size wise, it gave us some ideas, you know, that it wasn't just people telling me things. Yeah. So I got to see what it was, but yeah. So now that we got that out of the way, yeah. Uh, but Camp Freedom is coming to our shoot. Yep. And they're going to have a special raffle. All the proceeds for the raffle are going to benefit them. So make sure you come and support them. Absolutely. Uh, they're, they just do awesome things. And when we walked out to the course, and I didn't know this, and I've only been up there a couple of times. Yeah. But Kiefer, who's out of Colorado with HLE, he had to get back to his booth. And Keith was in our booth. So I said, well, I can't like walk the whole course. Yeah. So I walked to the fifth target and the fifth target was in that opening. Okay. And so we started walking back and I'm like, man, there's like a road here. It's like real clean. Yeah. Then I turn around and we were, thankfully nobody was out there because there was people shooting on the courses. Excuse me. We were on their mile long rifle range. Wow. Mile. Yeah. I didn't know that was there. Wow. So they're actually in the middle of building a three level shoot house. Wow. Nice. On that range. Okay. So that was really cool. But I'm like, yeah, why is this just like one big open spot? Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, so then you got back from Mexico. Yep. On Saturday. Yes, I did. Yeah. So we're here. We're in the studio. He's tanned. I'm not. I'm freezing. <laughs> He's probably colder than I am. Uh, yeah, it was 90 degrees when I left. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's a little chilly here. But so we're in the heat of the race now up to opening morning of Archery Fest this coming Friday. Yeah. We got a lot to do. Yes. Yeah. Busy week. Uh-huh. I get to do it. Don't even think about it. I know. It's, it's overwhelming. Yeah, every time really I think, think about it. Yeah, I do. It yeah. literally goes in my head and I'm like, man, I'm going to forget to do this. I'm going to yeah. forget to do that. Yeah. So I get to drive to Albany tomorrow. Yeah, that's fun. Uh-huh. Not really. <laughs> uh, it was supposed to be Allentown, but it's the A. It starts with always, an A. Yeah, it starts with changed. An a. <laughs> Yeah. So I have to go pick up one of the Landmaster, American Landmaster UTVs yeah. that they're allowing us to use, which is good because we definitely need it. Unfortunately, I thought I was picking up both, but there's only one here and then the other one is coming in from Indiana yeah. on Thursday. So we're going to have an EV and a diesel. Okay. So nothing says save the planet <laughs> like an EV yeah. and a diesel. Yeah. Uh, next to each other. Right. Yeah. But uh, everything I've read on this EV, because my biggest concern was EV, not enough power up and down the hills. Right. But everybody that has one of these things raves about it. Okay. So. Well, we're going to find out. Yeah, we're going to find out. <laughs> and it's going to be on video. So hopefully yeah. it all stands up to what it's supposed to stand up to. Yeah, yeah. And then Tuesday, you and I actually have to go to Camp Freedom. Yep. They are, are helping us out with some raffle items or auction items, I should say. Yeah. So we're going to go meet up with Matt and Jamie and get that handled and then go grab another trailer get the EV loaded back up, get your ATV and our other ATV loaded up. Yep. And meet a few folks up in the mountain to put our signage out. So for those of you that ever want to get into running an event, we don't have employees. Yeah. So like at the shop, it's me and my wife and then Doug and Keith come down and help out, you know, when they can. And, you know, Doug has an actual business and he just got back from Mexico. <laughs> So I can only imagine what his email looks like because yeah. I know what mine looks like and I, I check them every day. I haven't even looked. <laughs> so this is not like, you know, 
and again, it's not a, a shot at TAC, but TAC has employees. Yeah. Do they pick up some volunteers at each venue? I'm sure. Sure. I'm sure. But they have a crew that travels around driving their trucks and their trailers and all this. There is none of that. There's right. me, Doug, and our volunteers. And then, you know, my, my wife is obviously not driving my truck and a trailer. Yeah. Doug's wife is not driving a truck and a trailer. No. So we do a lot of that running with trailer stuff. And then if somebody else, you know, one of the Joe Ed parents or somebody has a trailer and can do that, you know, they'll, they'll help where they can. Right. But yeah, we don't, we're not paying anybody. So anybody that wants to start a 3D event, don't. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not fun. It's all, well, it, 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 it is fun. It is fun. It is fun. It is fun. Yes. It's just, it's just a ton of work. Right. So like yeah. January through now was like, okay, we checking the paper off and making sure this is done. And we did right. this and talked to this person and blah, 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 blah. And now it's like, oh, well, it's go shit. Yeah, now it's, there we, we go. A hundred and something targets. Our new steel target re, we received yesterday. Yesterday? What's the day? Today's Sunday. No, so. Friday. Friday we got it. Okay. Uh, he dropped it off Friday. John, the steel artisan, and he tried his darndest to make this as light as he could. <laughs> Man, the shit ain't light. <laughs> no, well, steel is steel. Yeah. You know. Eighth inch, two pieces with legs. Now, thankfully, he made it to where we can take it apart very easily. It's just got some thumb screws on it and, okay. and the front layer pops off and the front layer isn't too, too bad because that's the one that's all cut out. That's got the logo on it yeah. and a skull. The back one, however, only has one hole and it's four inches around. It's two feet in all directions. So yeah. it sits right in the middle of that piece of steel. Yeah. And my, your arms just aren't long enough to get there. <laughs> to get to the so, hole. Yeah. So to grab it. So you're like fighting off the edge of it. Uh-huh. But it is super cool. We've posted a bunch of pictures of it and that will be, and that was the funny part. So like novelty shots. And I guess if, you know, if the prizes aren't cool or big, you know, you, you don't have to put it at a, at a distance. Yeah. But that was the crap that surprised me the most out of all the novelty shots that yeah. they had. Okay. They were all like, you got tickets. Okay. And you got tickets and you put them like in a bucket or something. Yeah. And at the end of the year, they pick a winner. Oh. Huh. And That's... they have one steel target and it was an, they, they call it, it's an Onyx box. It's like a, I don't know, two foot by two foot square yeah. with an X in the middle and then there's a hole. So it looks like the Onyx logo. Okay. But it was a 32 yards. Oh. All right. I mean... Well, that's that's why you're getting ninety nine percent of our Joe Ed kids can make that shot. Yes, but that's why you get tickets and not right um, surprises. So it was like you get like a a lifetime elite membership or something, but they only give one. Yeah. So that that surprised me. Like for how big it's it is, you're you know there should be prizes. <laughs> so we don't have any of those prizes like that. We're giving the crap away the days of the shoot. So yeah, ours will be a little further. I'm thinking probably 50. Okay. Well, it's risk and reward. Right. The bigger so, reward, the bigger the risk. Right. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, we have a lot of prizes over three, dollars $400. Yeah. A lot of them. So, you know, every kind of like hour or two, we'll kind of change the, you know, okay, you know, this, you're coming in to shoot for this prize during this time and then this prize at this time. Right. And then we'll have like a, a little bit easier target where like if the kids want to get involved bag target, like maybe 30 with like some cards on it. Right. And you hit the card, whatever's on the card is what you win. And obviously those aren't going to be four or $500 prizes. Right. And then Sam from Archery in Motion, yep. we're going to have one of his platforms on a novelty course. Okay. And that's going to have the steel buck on it. Oh, nice. I haven't decided the distance yet because that's a bigger hole than what's on our new our disintegrator. Right. But it's moving. Uh, but it's moving, right. So uh, I'm trying to like, eh. So maybe we'll do like more like the three to 500 or the 250 to 400 prizes, dollar worth value prizes on the steel buck. Yeah. And then the bigger prizes at the further distance on the arrow disintegrator. But I haven't quite figured that out yet. Yeah. I don't know. And that, this is this is what I'm talking about. This is the problem. Like yes. you get to this point and you're like, okay, well, I know I want this to go there, but like, what are we going to do with it? Yeah. But we will also have one of the archery in motion platforms on the advanced course. Right. Which target is that going to be? I don't know yet. <laughs> Why are you asking me all these hard yeah. questions? Yeah. Yeah. No, I did have an idea. 
there's that one shot that's kind of like on a side hill. Okay. And Sam did send me a video that that track will work at, to a certain, you know, just can't be past a certain angle. Okay. And put like a walking bear, like coming out from behind a tree on the hill. Okay. Now they did have, I think it was one of his platforms there. Okay. But it was in the novelty area. It was at like 19 yards or something. Yeah. And they had like stickers on the target. Okay. And if you hit the sticker, you got, I think if you hit the Onyx sticker, you got an Onyx sticker. <laughs> okay. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. But it was weird. Like the way there was just a bunch of stickers and whatever sticker you hit, you got something to do with that company. Okay. I don't know if it was more tickets or, or what, but I, I don't, not real sure. Okay. But now, so Sam is actually going to have to run that target. Nope. So we're going to have, Sam is going to train somebody to run that target. <laughs> okay. Sam's got to be in his booth because he's also bringing another, a third unit to be in Vendor Village so he can show it off to some people. Okay. And, you know, that's a, a big, huge deal for him. He's driving in because yeah. these things are not light, so he yeah. doesn't want to ship them. So he's driving in. I think he's coming in Wednesday night. So yeah, we're going to do whatever we can to help him. So if yep. we got to get a couple of volunteers out there pressing a button, yep. I'm pretty sure the controller, it like connects to the track and there's just a button in. So it's like a Bluetooth. Kind yeah. Of and it just kind of moves that thing back and forth. Yeah. And then, so one's on the novelty course, one on the advanced course, one in Vendor Village. Then we got some more folks from Colorado coming. We got Randy and yeah. Cheyenne Sloan yeah. from High Desert Ranch. They did send me the details on the hunt. Oh, they did. Okay. Yes, good. they did. It's this September. Okay. You're hunting 7,500 acres of private land. Okay. One-on-one -on -one guide. Nice. Unit 13. Okay. OTC. Food and room and board are included. Okay. They will pick you up if you fly in. Obviously, you know how that works yep. with shipping crap. Yep. Best bet would be mm, boogie down and jump in the truck and head on out to Colorado. It'll save you a lot of money not having to ship stuff back and forth or you know, from there to here. Yeah. So they, but they will pick you up at the airport and get you back to the airport. Right. Your only spend is the $803 non-resident tag. Okay. So normal value of the hunt. That's, that's a $10,000 hunt. It's gotta be. It's 10,500. So you add the license in if you, cause you still have to buy the license regardless. Yeah. You're $11,000 yeah. into a hunt that now don't quote me on this price because they have not given me the price yet. Okay. What they're going to charge for the shoot. But let's just say it's 20 bucks for two arrows or one right. arrow or whatever the case is. Right. You win it spending 20 bucks. <laughs> you yeah. pay your $800 license fee and you figure, I'm now I'm going to base this off my truck. So diesel going out to Colorado, probably somewhere around 26 hours. Yep. You're probably going to have to fill up. Hmm? I would have to fill up probably five times. Yeah, so say every every five to six hours. Yep. So, you know, I I just filled the tank before I got here. It cost me ninety seven bucks. Yep. So ninety seven times, let's call it five. So you're, let's say another five hundred dollars in fuel, each way. Right. So you're a thousand bucks plus. Now, when you travel like that, you've got overnight stays. Like unless you're going to drive, you know, twenty seven hours straight. Yeah, you haven't met me. Well, <laughs> oh, I don't stay. You know, you could you could stop somewhere and you know one night or something in right. a hotel, and yep. you got you know meals and on the road, whatever. But probably cost you twelve hundred bucks to fifteen hundred bucks probably to get out there. Right. So between no, the fuel and it, and it all depends on the person. Like like Doug said, there's definitely people that are going to stop. Now I drove to Texas straight through. I drove to Arizona straight through. I drove to Illinois straight through. Normally, like aside from like. A dinner, you know, I'll stop at a fast food joint, right? grab a quick dinner, jump back in the truck and psh, boogie. Yeah, but you spend 500 bucks on Red Bull. This is true. <laughs> but but no, so like I'm big with like, okay, cooler, snacks, everything in the truck for a long drive like that. Yeah. And then I'm only stopping for dinner. So you can, you know, cut it down. But regardless, you're going to be well under the price of a hunt. Oh, no doubt. And now you don't have to, if you shoot an elk, you don't have to pay for meat to be shipped anywhere. You throw it in the cooler, put it in the back of the pickup and head back home. Yep. But this is, you know, a huge opportunity. It's just south of Hayden, Colorado. Yep. And map wise, it's, 
I don't want to say directly east, but east of Meeker. So if people are familiar with elk hunting in Colorado, Meeker's a huge one. Yep. So you're up in that vicinity. This was western Colorado. Yeah. Close, north, north pretty close to Colorado. Utah. Yep. Northwestern. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, that's a huge hunt. And the fact that, you know. Oh, it's huge. They're, they're, they're flying and they're flying into Philly, I believe. But they're coming out, you know, supporting our little shoot. Yep. That's, you know, I don't want to, I say little, you know, with quotes around it. But, but yeah, so like we're, we're definitely well, well, well above where we were last year as far as prizes. Yeah. Um, we've got Zambi boots. You didn't see the new Ancient boots yet. I did not, no. So Ancient is out of Henderson, Nevada. They make, it, it looks like a moccasin. Okay. But it's a boot. It's okay. got a little bit of camo on it. Yeah. No treads on the soles. Okay. And it's meant for stocking game. Hmm. So he couldn't be out here, but he sent us a display pair and they're still at the shop, I think, in one of the bins, but he's giving a pair away. Nice. And they're super cool. But no, I tell you, because you already know the name, but the logo is, or the, yeah, part of the logo is A-N-X. Okay. Y-N-T. Yeah. So that's every, that? and according to him, everybody kind of looks at him like, how the hell do you pronounce that? Yeah, it's. I was smart enough when he sent the display pair in, there were some cards in there <laughs> and I scanned the little QR code okay. and it tells you how to pronounce it. So okay. it is ancient for those of you that can't figure it out, hmm. but they're cool little boots. So that was really cool. I reached out to him on Instagram and said, Hey, would you be interested in coming? And he's like, a little too short notice. Yeah. Another new one. See, Doug, you missed all the good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I missed all the good stuff. Another new one is Mule Deer Foundation. Oh yeah? So okay. Marshall, yeah. who is the Northeast Regional Director which is pretty funny because he lives in South Dakota, or North Dakota, excuse me. But we're going to do a lot with Mule Deer Foundation here over the next couple of years. But again, short notice, couldn't yeah. get guys out here. Yeah. But they were like, we, we want to be part of this. Let's, what do we got to do? And I said, well, that's, you know, totally up to you guys. So what they're going to do is they're doing a raffle. Okay. Uh, they bought a $500 gift card off of us. Okay. And we're going to have a little piece of paper at our booth. And it's going to have a QR code. Okay. And to get in on the raffle, all you have to do is scan the QR code, Yep. fill in your information, and they're going to send you information about becoming a member because okay. there actually is a chapter in Pennsylvania. It's just kind of oh, yeah. scatterbrained at the moment. Okay. So they're trying to build it back up. He gave me some numbers that I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> There's like a lot of Pennsylvanians that hunt, that go out West to hunt mule deer. Tundra. Like a lot. Yeah. Like way over the number I thought. So he was like, yeah, whatever we can do to, to, you know, better serve that area, they're going to do it. Yeah. So literally doesn't cost you anything. You win, you get a 500 gift card to come in the shop. You, it's kind of hard to beat that. Do they have a booth at Harrisburg? I think they did. I think. Yeah. And then I'm actually hoping to hear from the Northeast president of Sheep Foundation. Okay. They had a meeting today. So I'm hoping to hear either something tonight or tomorrow about them coming out, but we, we've had a lot of new stuff going on over the last week. So yeah. I mentioned the steel artisan before who did our target. He did this freaking awesome fire pit. It looks like a globe. Okay. It's about three feet tall. It's got deer, turkey, elk, all kinds of stuff all over anything you can hunt. Basically he's given that away. Nice. And there's no purchase for that. You're really? going to scan a QR code at his booth to like his Facebook page. Okay. And somebody's going to get, pick this one you're getting a raffle ticket and cool. put it in a pot and somebody's going home in an awesome fire pit <laughs> and i wasn't joking i yeah. did post this on facebook and instagram if for some reason you do not want that come and find me i will happily <laughs> put it in the back of my truck <laughs> yeah but so yeah so tomorrow is signage wednesday no, not not tomorrow tomorrow Monday. yeah see albany you're going to albany yeah. yeah tuesday is signage wednesday we have wnep first thing in yep. the ass crack of dawn <laughs> So be on the morning show, WNEP TV 16. Yep. So uh, if you're up at 4.30 like we are. Yeah. 4.30 to 6.30. We'll be there. Yeah. I think it's every 25 minutes they cut to us. So we'll be live up the mountain. And then we're going to get the comp course laid out and staked because yep. that one's pretty simple to do. Yeah. Then we're going to start mixing our pine saw and muff balls. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that hopefully we don't have a bear take down any targets this year. No. Because we have no extras. So no extras. We have no no replacements. Nope. So I'm hoping, I know Al is bringing two trailers this year. 
And I know Hunter did tell me they were going to throw some extra 3Ds in it. Just I just don't case. know what they are. <laughs> So, for instance, we had that mule deer that got shorted on the shipment from yep. Delta. Yeah. And, it, you know, not their fault. But so when I went to pick up the shots, at, the target's a big shot. Yeah. I said, hey, do you have something here that I can replace that mule deer with? And we got Undead Fred. It's a zombie. Okay. So, thankfully, we had the extra alligator from last year. Right. Because I was not about to put a zombie on any of the courses. <laughs> so, the zombie will be in as kind of like just like a, you want to try to shoot it during the novelty shoots, you can. Okay. But you, the rings are actually in his eyes. I was uh, pretty funny. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so there, cool. there's only two rings that's in his eyeballs. Okay. He's a cool looking target, just not something I want to go stick out on a course. Yeah. Uh, and then. That's a Delta or that's a big shot? Delta. It is. Okay. Yeah. It's a backyard series, but. Okay. Uh, but I loaded the trailer today, touched those targets for the fourth time. <laughs> Four more. Four more to go. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. The, it wasn't bad this year. I broke them all up this year by course so like last year we kind of just yeah we shoved them all in yeah, there we just throw them out of them so this year i actually them. kept the gaylord boxes from big shot yeah and i put dividers up okay now i definitely heard some shit moving around when i was driving home <laughs> whether they're still where they're supposed to be i don't yeah. know but it'll be close though yeah it'll yeah. be close yeah and obviously we have the target list which i have them all written down on but then wednesday night thursday night we got to go pick up the truck wednesday yep truck giveaway on in gmc yeah 2023 left over so no miles not used crew cab yep. red it is red it's not the color of mine it is red no? yeah. like fire engine red i wouldn't like go that far that pepsi red no mm. elevation red oh okay a little darker yeah that's a little pretty darker. close to yours though not as dark as yours. yeah mine's up real like the maroon color yeah right but but yeah okay. so it's we got to go pick that up cool. and get that placed yeah <laughs> we will have some extra help thursday because mike from numa is actually coming up Wednesday. Okay. He's going to drop the trailer up at the mountain. Okay. And he's staying at the house with us for uh, the night. And then he'll be up. And I told him, I said, I hope you might get up early. <laughs> what, what do you yeah. mean? I said, well, because I'll be leaving about quarter to four. Now that's and what, Wednesday? He'll about be here th- Wednesday, but Thursday morning, because okay. Thursday's the big day. Yes. Because we got to get all the targets stood up. So it's a little bit of a pain. Yep. But Wednesday is the crazy early day. Because of the news. Yeah. I mean, obviously we don't need to be there, you know, before light on Thursday, but yeah, Wednesday will definitely suck. But then Friday, Saturday, Sunday sucks even more because we have to be there before security leaves. Yeah. Uh, So those become real early days and yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. But spectators this year, we did put a flyer out. So it's 15 bucks at the gate cash. Yep. Yep. Very similar with the competition, 30 bucks cash. You don't have to be registered for the festival courses to shoot the competition. Okay. You come in, you're not going to ride a lift for the comp. So the comp is going to okay. be, you know where the small set of water slides is? Right by Bender Village there? Yeah. Next to the practice range? Yeah. So we're actually going to walk them up the path for the water slides. Okay. And take them straight that's, back in those pines. That's an easy. Work. work them around on the bottom. Okay. It's an easy walk. Yeah. Uh, no lifts involved, so they don't need a wristband. Yep. So that is 30 bucks cash and you need three shooters at least in your class to make a class and winner gets 50% of the pot of that class. So have we come up with classes yet? So we're using IBO classification. Okay, okay that's good. Easy. Yep. So, okay. you know, unlimited is going to be, you know, whatever scope, whatever length bars, blah, 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 blah. Hunters can have fixed sight lens and 12 inch bars. Okay. And then we'll have, I think... A couple of our youth, our shooters are going to shoot it. Okay. Which is cool. Yeah, um, definitely. And then. About ages, you can have old man course, like for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, it, so basically rules. all of the stuff, the way it's going to work, there's going to be two stakes. Okay. So it'll be like for the juniors and like recurve, I don't know if we get any recurve shooters. Yeah. They're going to shoot from one stake. Seniors are going to shoot from that stake. And then I forget what they call it not senior master or something. It's yes. like, you're not that old, but you're close old. <laughs> yeah. They'll, those guys on unlimited and bow hunters are all going to shoot from the further stake. Okay. But it is known distance so they can use range finder. Yep. Yeah. So now I know last year we didn't allow it. Have you kind of spoke to the people up in montage about walk-ins? Yep. So we, we actually did allow it last year. They We did get some people, but yes, if you did not register, the only part that sucks, if you didn't register yet, 
is you may not get two courses in. So if you register online and pick your morning knock time, then when you finish, you come back, Vendor Village, hang out, check some stuff out, yep. grab a bite to eat. And then at 12, when we open all the courses up again, or not again, but first come, first serve at the steak, right. you have an ability to go out and shoot a second course, where if you don't register and don't have a knock time and you come in, let's say on Saturday, which is the busy day, yep. and there's no knock times when you get there, you have to wait till noon. Right. And then right. you're only going to probably get one course in. Probably, yeah. Now, Friday. If you're going to walk in, Friday is probably the better yeah. day to do it. And and actually, the, the there was a lot of people sign up Friday that for this year. Okay. Um, I don't want to say like a Saturday crew. Yeah. But definitely more than there was last year. Okay. So right now we're ahead of where we were last year by a lot. So I'm not saying I'm not throwing numbers out until I have the the final paper on Sunday. Yeah. But we're we're over where we were last year for sure. So yeah, you know, which that's been the case for a mm-hmm. month now. Yep. So, yep. So that's, you know, the goal is is obviously just to, to get more people involved every year. Yeah. Vendors have doubled. Yep. We've doubled the amount of vendors. Yeah. We got a lot of vendors this year. I'm actually starting to worry because when I printed out the map. (laughs) You run out of room. Of where I could put everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It might've been a bad idea. (laughs) Yeah. We'll get them in. Yeah. We'll get, definitely get them in. The problem is the trailers. The trailers are what throws it off. Yeah. So we have to keep those guys to one side. Yeah. And there are quite a few of them. Yeah. Numa. Big shot. Cool you. Cool you. Bow-minded. Yep. Our trailer, but our trailer's a little different because it gets tucked somewhere else. Yeah, we'll be the first ones. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to be anywhere near where they are. Right. And then obviously the other big issue this year was power, which wasn't horrible, but we may need to move a couple of things. But at least the lodge is right there. The so, lodge is there. So like PGC's coming this year. They are actually going to sell licenses. Okay. Or they're, they're bringing a computer for something. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's to sell licenses, but don't quote me on that either. Okay. But they asked about power. Hillside Engraving needs power right. for his hat press. Okay. We need power for our aerosaw. Yep. Mamba needs they have an power for the aerosaw. Yep. Somebody else just asked me about power. And then, so we did get a coffee company that's coming. Oh, okay. Uh, Culture Coffee. They're actually a local company. Okay. I met them at Brewfest. Oh, cool. And then we also got a jerky company. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Dark dark Run Jerky. Okay. I'm pretty, sh- almost positive that's what it is. But they were like, I, I added them Friday. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm, steady Stream Tax Room is going to be there, which did the bear. No, it's, it's right behind us. Yep. Did a lot of my buck mounts. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of like just off the top of my head, but it's really hard. <laughs> There's too many. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, so Doug comes back from vacation. He gets a nice tan. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm going to drive him nuts for the next yes. seven days. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, other than that, what yep. else you got? What else you got? We got five more minutes. What else we got? What else can we think of for the shoot? I don't know. I'm still I'm still in a fog from... Uh-huh. Too many mojitos. <laughs> lots of Long Island IT's. <laughs> yeah, lots. Yep. I don't know. Just uh, getting ready. Just... Yep. Getting my... Now, the weather has gotten mouth. better. Yeah. Every time I watch it. Yep. But I definitely would not say come up without rain gear in your pack, yep. just in case. Yeah. I think the only day this week that's a washout is Wednesday. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but I, as far as the days of the shoot, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think... Yeah, so Friday... Chance showers, not... Friday, they're talking like later at night, yep. but it's going to be like 70. Yep. Saturday, a little bit cooler, some scattered showers, as yep. they say. Yeah. But that has changed a couple of times since I've looked at it. Yeah. I just hope it... If it's going to do it, unfortunately, Saturday, I hope if we're going to get like a a piss and shower here or there, I hope it happens during the day because obviously after party is from six to nine. Right. And the band is going to be playing and that's yes. not cool and there's rain and electronics. Yeah, and, it's not good. But have you, is there any kind of like I, I, plan B for that? I'm hoping to so, go inside. Yeah, I'm hoping that building that's going to be right behind us. Yes. The rental building that was like kind of opened up at Brewfest. Okay. And there was nothing in there except for some vendors. So I'm hoping that, you know, God forbid there's like a downpour or something, we can put them in and get some people in there and just figure out how to serve them food and beer if yeah. they decide to to buy something. Well, was Brewfest, did they open a lodge for that? 
Yep. So the brew fest was in both buildings. Okay. But so it was weird because you had like certain vendors in this building and certain vendors in that building. Yeah. But then there was vendors in the bar area. Okay. In the lodge. Oh, okay. And I didn't know this. So like brew, this surprised me and I understood it. But so brew fest on the second day, there was like a VIP deal where if you bought so much, you know, paid so much for a ticket, you got right. in early and got food pairings with your alcohol okay. and all this stuff, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. That started at 1230. Okay. At 330, they were like pushing everybody out of the lodge. And I'm okay. like, what's going on? Yeah. That this went online. But because it's an all you can drink event. Oh, okay. Because it's, it's tasting. It's not like you're not getting like a whole beer. Right. You can only run it for four hours. Okay. So there was literally. That's, that's got to be a state deal. Yeah. yeah. So literally for two hours, they cleared everybody out. Okay. All the vendors that were breweries and stuff were like changing kegs and doing all this stuff. Okay. And then at 530, they reopened the doors. Okay. Um, for another four hours. Yeah, well, until nine. So three and a half or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so no, that it was, that just surprised me because I didn't know anything about it. I didn't see it in any of the, you know, stuff that was sent to us. Right. But yeah, so other than that, we got after party, we got the truck giveaway, we got boots, we got PSC actually sent in a youth bow to give away. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do that. That's cool. Yeah. PSC uprising. Okay. So I'm going to try to, you know, like as I'm driving around, like I'm just going to kind of keep it in the thing and like see a kid and be like, yeah, he looks like he could use that <laughs> and hand him a bow. We're going to be shooting lots of video, lots of pictures. Yes. Yeah. We got the truck. We got lots of prizes. Lots of stuff to throw out at the after party. Yep. Our Rocky Talkies came in. They sent us the new ones. Oh, yeah. The five watt. They're brand new. Okay. Uh, it's actually, it gives you better range. Okay. And I'm like, I don't think we really need yeah, it. But not there. Yeah. So I can't wait to try them out. I was trying to play with them in the shop the other day, but yeah. because of the wattage, the second, like, I was... 35 feet away from it. Yeah. But because I was enclosed, yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> oh. yeah. So, but we'll test them out. They did send us chargers this year. I don't think we'll need those either. We didn't need them last year. Nope. So, three days, four days straight uh, running yeah. radios, and not once did we charge them. Yep. Sunday yeah. is the, so I think the elk shoot is going to be just like our truck shoot. Okay. They're going to pick a qualifier the closest to the center. Okay. Each day. And then those final three will shoot off similar to the truck. Right. But they don't want it at a far distance. They want somebody to win this trip. So okay. I was like, your trip. Yeah, not right. Mine. Not mine. I'm trying to think. Well, There's got to be well, something. When you else. say not far, you're not going to be triple digits like the truck. No, but I don't even it's think. It's not going to be a gimme, though. Well, yeah, definitely. It's not going to be like 30 yards. No. <laughs> I would s assume somewhere between probably 60 and 80. Okay. Um, which. That's reasonable. You, you yeah, know, yeah. Definitely a, a doable shot. Yes. Not easy, um, but no, no, but doable. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm trying. Oh, the awards! You didn't get to see the awards yet. I did not. And I forgot to bring them because they're at the house. Oh yeah, um, yeah. No, I did not. See our them. Paul Bunyan Award and our Arrow Disintegrator Award. Okay. And CJ, so CJ, a big shout out to you if you're listening to the podcast. CJ is a junior in high school, I believe. I'm smart, smart kid. Him and his brother, Big Will, and he's got a 3D printer. And I basically gave him the idea of what I wanted, and yeah. he ran with it. And nailed it. So the because of the logo, yeah, our logo, he couldn't make it like a cutout like the Paul Bunyan Award. So it's like okay. a plaque, but it, he put put a shelf on it. Oh yeah, so that you can put the broken arrow on there. Oh okay, that's cool. So yeah, so I'm excited about that one. Okay, what else? There's got to be more, man. My, well, my, my there's brain tons doesn't more. We just can't. Yeah, function. my brain just. Uh, Plus, it's also eight thirty on a Sunday night. Mm -hmm. You know, usually we do this midday. Midday. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yep, yep. yep. <laughs> And it's Mother's Day. It is Mother's Day. Oh, it's a happy Mother's Day. Yes. yes happy we, Mother's Day. I, but... I meant to do that when we came yeah. on and I forgot. Yeah. But yeah, so other than that, we're going to, we're look at that, we just hit an hour. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so we're going to jump out of here. So next week, starting Friday, May 17th, we will be at Montage Mountain for Archery Fest at Montage Mountain 2024. We are actually going to record from the mountain. We're going to get with all of our vendors. We're going to pull some shooters as they're walking through Vendor Village to interview yeah. them, yep. get their thoughts. We'll probably get the boys from Antlered Up podcast on. Yep. So you're just going to hear a lot of stuff. You're going to see a lot of stuff because we're going to be videoing pretty much starting tomorrow. I'm actually hooking the stupid camera up to my dashboard, yeah. going to Albany. Albany. <laughs> It's a real yeah. real quick turnaround, little country store. I got to go pick this up at, but it's a three-hour drive. I just didn't yeah. want to have to make. Yeah. 
But yeah, so we will be there 17th through the 19th. If you are not shooting and you want to just come up and check out the v- vendors, you want to come out and hang out at the after party, it is free admission to the general public. doesn't matter. The only people that need to pay for anything are spectators if you want to walk the course, yep. shooters if you want to shoot the course, or competitors that want to compete. Yep. Um, everything else is free of charge except for food and beverage. And we hope to see you there. Yep. I have a number in mind to break. I'm really hoping we do. I'm not throwing that number out there yet because if it happens, trust me, I'll be shouting it from the rooftop. <laughs> so until next week, we hope to see you up there. Yes. Doug's going to go get his, you know, beauty sleep now that he's back on East Coast time. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm uh, sober. And, and he's sober. So yeah. <laughs> see, this is what happens. He goes away. Yeah. But no, we appreciate you guys tuning in and we'll talk to you next week. Yeah. See you on the mountain.